We also have a folder in the reference materials called team guidelines. These are important for everyone on the team to review. We have the, a lit, an explanation of the role of the team lead, as well as an explanation of the, of the role of the interpreter. We want everyone to review confidentiality guidelines and the team requirements as well. I'd especially like to draw attention to the interpreter guidelines. It's really important that everyone review this because everyone will be working with the interpreter. The interpreter role is simply to be a conduit of information. They are your voice and they're the family's voice. But we ask that every team member try to use Google Translate as much as possible in order to reduce the load of the interpreter. Of course, the interpreter is available, especially for difficult conversations where Google Translate just doesn't cut it. The interpreter also should only be sticking to interpreting and not taking on additional tasks. Actually, sorry, one more reference material are another look at the NEAT model, a guide of how to check in on a bi-weekly basis with your team, where we do recommend you include the family as much as possible. And we have information about what the three month and six month team meetings will be as well as the first team meeting in this folder meeting support materials are optional worksheets that you can work on prior to your team meetings community resources include a resource guide that we have put together we also have legal resources with legal resources, we have a guide explaining our approach to referrals for att private attorneys in the community. Some may be pro bono and some may be low cost. We also have general legal information with tutorials on different legal subjects that often influence our, the population we're working with. Third, in the resources folder, we have housing resources. For housing resources, we have a housing toolkit. We ask that the if there is a housing lead as one of the goals for the family, that you review this in detail, this document in detail. We also ask that for housing, people watch this video by our housing partner called New Anchor. That way you know who to turn to for housing needs. Lastly, we have some tips and tricks regarding banking. Most families will not have a bank account, but will arrive to a point where they have the space in their life to prioritize creating one. This often requires getting an ID from their consulate first and then through the DMV. One more thing to highlight about banking is that there are refillable debit cards that you should be able to link them to even if they don't have a bank account. And that concludes our team toolkit with the community resources. Next, you would look at congregational resources. With congregational resources, you can learn more about ways that teams have fundraised in the past, although we do ask you to try to keep fundraising to a minimum so that teams, families can be self-sufficient. COVID-19 has been particularly unique in that teams have done more fundraising than usual because as we mentioned, there are so few resources accessible in the community that this was often a last resort. We also have this information about engaging your congregation. This is information particularly giving examples of how pe 
congregations in the past have worked together with their with their team. We have repeat information about confidentiality confidentiality guidelines and we have guidelines for if you were to ask the family you're accompanying to speak at an event with your congregation there are specific guidelines we'd like you to follow lastly we have our resources through the organization there are a few community partnerships that we can turn to to ask for help on an occasional basis. For example, we have a mental health clinician who's offered free support for our families, also other interpreters, personal connections to attorneys and agencies, as well as a few volunteers who may be able to offer housing. We'd like you to note that we can always reach out to our monthly coalition of faith leaders throughout the Bay Area to advocate for specific asks you may have for the family you're accompanying. Most importantly, we have an emergency fund. The emergency fund gives offers up to $500 per family for an emergency. There are specific criteria and instructions of how to access this fund, but in a nutshell, we ask that it be for, of course, an emergency and that it be paid directly to a service provider, such as a landlord, rather than given in cash to the family. That is our summary of the team toolkit. And of course, you can always reach out to the IM4HI coordin um, NEAT coordinator for more support. I'm here to consult with and to talk through self-sufficiency and using the team toolkit in any way I can help. Thank you.